Okay, so back on this Drake uh, T4XB, or no, this is a T4X, just a T4X, something special. I wanted to um, vector in this coil and show you uh, what I found. So it was really close to the uh, stack coil here. So if you look at this, there's a gap now, but those two were really, really close. I mean, a lot closer than they are now. They are close now, but... There's definitely a gap there now, so that's working out. But what seemed really bad was that coil was touching the side here, so it was pretty much touching this metal casing. I don't know if that coil is insulated or not, but it looks like the last rung of it was touching the side here. So let's get a view of that, if I can get in there and see it. Yeah, yeah, so, so there's the side, and it was pretty much, you can't see from the photo here or the video, but... There was no gap. The last part of it was touching the uh, the wall there of the chassis. So I'm not sure if that's going to make a difference, but this thing has just not been tuning. So I'm going to hope that made a difference. So I'm looking for things that can short in here. And I've checked all the capacitors. They're not shorted. It's really, I don't seem to get any load out of this thing, so I was trying to figure out the signal from this Pi network, they call it. It goes into the loading, so it comes off of here, and these are all tuned by the uh, wafer switch. So if the wafer switch is malfunctioning, you're really in trouble. But here in the loading, I was trying to figure out how this works, and looks like it couples through the loading here and we're completely loaded. It, I, I didn't realize that at zero we're like loaded all the way. Yeah, that's crazy. So at zero this thing's loaded and you have to really unload it going this way. I thought it was the opposite, so that's wild. So anyway, like this we're, we're loaded heavily. Everything should be going out through here. And uh, since we have AC, this should not bother with grounding the AC RF. And it goes down through here. And I guess into here somehow, or sorry, into the uh, output jack here. Yeah, right here. So I can't really get a feel or see what's in here. I tried pulling this jack off and it's soldered on. So I wanted to even look in there, but I can't. So not quite sure it had access down there. I hope it don't have to. I hope this little fix has got this puppy back to running. Boy, looking through the camera, this thing looks pretty, uh, pretty grungy still. Looks like it has little rocks and stuff in it. I don't know. So nothing's touching here. It's not scraping, so there's no short like that. You would hear it grind. It's amazing how these things even stay together. 1960 technology. They had these things like in the 30s even. Variable capacitors. And this one here is a little heavier duty for the plate voltage. I had the knob taken off. I'm trying to get it to fit back on here. There it goes like that. Give it a shove. There it is. And there's the plate. So you gotta check this stuff, make sure it's ground, it's grounded figure out um okay so this variable capacitor talks through these lines here so it's hooked up into here yeah I checked the stuff for shorts and the caps are shorted so not sure yet people all right well guess I'm gonna put the tubes back in and fire it up for the finals back in see if moving that quill helped I doubt it but let's give it a try